Hey guys, Richie Castellano here. I want to thank you guys for all the love for the new Roundabout cover by the Band Geeks, the Quarantine Edition Roundabout. It's awesome. It's it's probably the fastest growing video we, we've ever had, and uh, we really appreciate that. And I noticed in the comments a lot of people are asking about how we did it. Uh, people were asking if this was some sort of simultaneous voice uh, video chat kind of uh, service we're using, like a Zoom or FaceTime or a Skype or anything like that. Um, no, we're doing it individually and overdubbing, just like we would if we were recording an album, say, for example. We're just building it track by track. Um, I don't want to go into this too quickly because this topic has been covered over and over again, but the reason you usually can't do this is because of something called latency. If you don't know what latency is, latency is a delay caused by processing. So, uh, very quickly, Say Andy Ascalese plays drums, right? And he's playing it on Zoom, right? And I hear the drums, they sound great. I add my guitar to the drums. The problem is, by the time the data gets back and forth, my guitar now, in Andy's ears, sounds out of time with what he's playing, and it's distracting enough to throw him off, okay? Um, so there's a, there are ways around that, like, for example, if you all have blazing fast internet connections, fast computers and you're very close to each other, then you can get the latency down small enough where it's almost tolerable, but it's really not tolerable enough to play tightly. Um, for just having a conversation over Zoom, uh, you know, a latency of even like 100 to 200 milliseconds is fine. You don't really perceive it in a conversation. But when you're playing music, we have to be precise with the rhythm and the timing. Uh, 200 milliseconds is an eternity and it's enough to distract you to the point where you can't really play anymore. So that's the reason we don't do it that way. And I suspect most videos that you're seeing with ha that have all these remote collaborations aren't doing it that way either. That's just my opinion. So um, then how did we do it? So the way we did it is we built it track by track. So I started in Pro Tools and I built a reference track for Roundabout. And I started with a tempo map where I figured out the arrangement of the song, and I said, okay, it needs to slow down here, speed up here, because Roundabout's not a song that's in one tempo. It, it moves, and I also had to figure out where it changes meter and all that stuff, so you do that all in Pro Tools, just like you would when you're about to record a song for your album. Um, and then I played a rough piano track on it, like... Um, uh, just so we can hear we are in the song, recorded that along with the click, and then I figured out the vocal harmonies, and I said, okay, um, so Anne going to sing this part here, I'm going to sing this part here, Andy Grazian is going to sing this part here, and we, we mapped all that out, figured all that stuff out ahead of time. The, the thing that's going to help you in situations like this is as much pre-planning as you can. Basically, if everybody has a blueprint and it's been pre-arranged to where everybody knows exactly what they have to do, and if you're the person who is putting all this together in the video editing and the mixing, if you ensure that everybody's going to give you exactly what you need then when it comes time to edit you won't go oh man i forgot about this part or oh he didn't do that and now nobody's doing it it's a big problem so it's all about you know pre-planning so i made a mix uh, of a couple mixes and i sent everybody first i sent them their isolated vocal harmony to learn so everybody started listening to it getting the harmonies in their head because it takes a little while to be able to do that so then um, I sent Andy Escalise, our drummer, I sent him a few files, I sent him the click, I sent him the piano, and I sent him the tempo map uh, from the Pro Tools session. So he brought it into his Pro Tools system at his house, he mic'd up his drums, he put his headphones on, and he played along with my reference track, and then heard in his headphones uh, my reference vocal part for him, so when he had to do the, uh, da, 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 at the end he could sing that. So he you know, played, just recorded just like he would on a normal session. He overdubbed his percussion parts, the bells, the shakers, and all that stuff, and he filmed it with a GoPro. And then when, when he was done with his session, he sent me all the files. I took it, I took all the audio files, I brought them into my Master Pro Tool session and uh, mixed them a little bit. And uh, then Anne-Marie and I recorded on top of just his drums. So we were just hearing drums when we were playing. And of course, the, the reference piano and and the, the, our own vocal parts that we had to sing along to. We had our own mixes, thanks to the uh, 
Motu 1248. Now, when I recorded on the Rickenbacker, I know a lot of people love that sound. Thank you so much. I love the Rickenbacker sound too. It's one of my favorite things. Um, when we recorded the Rickenbacker, I used the Ricco sound output, uh, which is a stereo cable, and I recorded it into two DI channels. I have a, a Universal Audio 4710D down here, a little bit of compression just to make sure it does, doesn't peak. So I was just going direct in. I didn't have any sort of modeling at the time, just direct. And uh, so I played bass and sang, she sang, and uh, we did that in one take. And then she did a double afterwards because it's heavily doubled on the record. So there's an Anne Marie double there kind of mixed in. Uh, so if you were wondering about that. For the background vocals, we used the um, Abbey Road uh, auto double tracking plugin from Waves, which works really nicely. It's a great plugin. So we did that. And then once uh, we were done recording, and we recorded the video on an iPhone. Once we were done recording that, I uh, mixed it in. I put the Helix on the two Rickenbacker channels. And if you want to see a video about how to get that sound, I'll post a link in one of these corners. Uh, have You can download that Chris Squire Helix preset for free from the Line 6 Custom Tone site. And uh, once that was done, I made an, a new mix to be sent out to Andy Graziano, our guitar player. So he um, now had a mix of the drums, bass, my vocals, Anne-Marie's vocals, and Andy Escalise's vocals. So he played on top of that. And he did a bunch of different scenarios. He did, well, I guess two scenarios. He did, one was the acoustic guitar for the intro, and the other, and the middle and the ending. And the other thing he did was an electric guitar while he sang. So he did that, he recorded it with his phone, he, I believe he recorded it into GarageBand and he used uh, he used the Helix as the guitar interface, I think, and he might have run the mic through, I'm not sure how he did it, but he sent me um, a guitar track, acoustic guitar track, and vocal track, and all the sounds you heard from that came from his Helix. Those were Andy's sounds. So um, then he sent me all that, I put that all together in the master session, then I made a new mix, sent that out, to our keyboard player, Rob. So he had the click, uh, and he had basically everything but him. Uh, and then he added his keyboard parts to that. He um, sent, he broke them up into individual tracks because he was switching sounds, like he would do a organ, synth, um, the reverse piano thing. He split them out, sent me all the individual tracks, then he sent me his video file, and then I had enough to do the mix. So I did the whole mix, got it sounding as good as I could, you know, kept referencing the original record, and then, you know, did a regular stereo mix. Then what I did is I brought that into uh, Magix Vegas, which is the, the video editing software I used to edit this, and then I started syncing up all the video files everybody sent me to the two track, and, you know, using the audio from the camera. You know, sync all that up, you do it manually, you, you listen, you, you watch, and you listen. And then once that's done, you uh, start you know, cutting it up and saying, okay, I want these sort of boxes on this one. I want uh, this sort of ge geometric shape. I want uh, uh, one shot, two shot. And you just go through the whole song and you edit it. And that's a very lengthy process and um, uh, save often while you're doing that if you decide to do this sort of project because it's very uh, intensive on your computer. And that's it. And then that was the video. That's how we did it. So it was very similarly done to how any multi-track song is built. Um, and again, the key is to pre-plan. Uh, if you have a really good reference track and everybody in the band knows what they're supposed to be doing, you'll be fine. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Thank you again for watching the roundabout video. Uh, I should have probably done this in the beginning, but here's a link to it if you've missed it. And uh, I'll see you next time. And we got some fun stuff coming up in the near future. And I'm excited about it, but I'm not saying a thing. So thanks for watching and uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks.